Psalms chapter 35, a psalm of David, a messianic psalm. So we're going to learn a lot. The word let is found 17 times in this, this psalm. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Ephesians 6.10 It's asking God to defend for you when those who are against you. Listen, you're not to take no battle in your own hands. You're to let God take care of it all. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The Lord says, I will repay. So, what are you to do? <clears throat> Excuse me. Take hold of the shield of faith, Ephesians, and buckler, and stand up for my help. David's asking God to, to get dressed up in armor and prepare and fight for him. And you'll find in the Bible that at one time there was an angel that did fight. Wiped out an entire army. Uh, Joshua sees a man come up to him dressed for a battle. Draw out also thy spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. David's asking God to take up the fight. God's the father. Every boy will go run to his father when they're in times of trouble. We get that because God is our father. Now David's talking about the enemy. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Well, that's all the religious leaders in, in Jesus' time. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. And what David's saying here is, let God, let you have the victory. Let your people have the victory. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. And there were times when Jesus and his ministry that they wanted to do something right then and there. And something happened that Jesus just walked away. David said, let confusion be upon the enemies. Uh, it says over in uh, Corinthians, the Lord is not the author of confusion. Talking about tongues. God doesn't do anything confusing. God knows exactly what now we may not understand, for the Bible says, you know, our thoughts are not as his thoughts. Let them be as chaff before the wind. Now the chaff is what's blown away, the, the refuse, the, the, uh, the compost pile. It's not the fruit. It's the waste. And what they'll do is they'll, they'll break it all up and throw it up in the air with pitchforks and the wind will take away the junk. And what drops down to the floor is that what is seed. Now let the angel of the Lord chase them. Now if you run back to 34 verse 7 last night, we saw that the angel of the Lord is omnipresent. Here the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, is omnipotent. Means he is full of power. I guess you can apply that to Santa Claus and his great work he can do through the in one night. The power that he has to break into every house and steal everyone's cookies. Oh, I didn't say that. This is the same angel of the Lord that appears to David when when uh, uh, he's given three options. And they come to the, the threshing floor of yarn. In which you had the title deed of what is where the Temple Mount is today belongs to David, belongs to God. It all belongs to God. The angel of the Lord. Angel of the Lord first shows up to uh, to uh, Hagar about Ishmael. Interesting. I believe that is a Genesis sixteen eleven. I believe. I can't be sure on that. Let their way be dark. Well, that's Satan. 
There is no light in Satan. And slippery. Well, how can you walk when it's slippery? A snake is slippery. Let the angel of the Lord persecute them. Give back to what they're doing. Because he said in uh, verse 3 that they persecute me. Give unto them what they do unto me. For without cause have they hid from for me their net, their net in the pit. Romans eleven eight to eleven. There's that there's that net, their pit, a hole in the ground. You go walking along, either a man or animal, and then boom, you fall into it, and there's no way to get out. Which without cause they have digged for my soul. And it may be a literal net, and it may be a figurative net. It may be traps of life. They're trying. Listen, they try to do that to Jesus all the time. Why did they bring that woman to Jesus who was caught in adultery without the, the, the man that did it? Because they wanted to catch him. They wanted to say, hey, if you say stone that woman, oh, you're really good, aren't you? And I thought you were merciful and gracious, Mr. Jesus. And if you say, well, let the woman go, well, the law says no. And if you keep on reading in the Gospels, they tempted him. They, te they came to him with questions, but they weren't really questions. Oh, what should we do about taxes? What was that one? Well, if Jesus said, pay your taxes, he, the Jews would have been angry with him. The Jews were paying taxes to the Roman government. Now, if Jesus said, no, don't pay your taxes, oh, they can go run to Caesar and say, look, we got, we got a tea party. I mean, I oh, I hate when I do things like that. Uh, oh, man. Phew. I'm sorry. Uh, we got a guy who won't pay his taxes here. And then the Roman government will go after him. That's a net. And you got to be careful as a born-again Christian. And uh, you got to learn, especially in this family, just because they say they're Christians, you better watch out. Who knows? They may take your way. They may use you for work and not pay you. That's a net. Which without cause they have digged for my soul. They wanted David's soul. So what did Jesus say? He said, Fear him that, that can fear him not that can destroy the body, but fear him that can throw the body and the soul into hell. Jesus was not afraid of everyone around him, believe me. And he knew he was going to go down to hell. <laughs> How about that one? Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Well, that pit is unaware. You don't see it coming. So let it happen to them. Let them be unaware. Listen, America is right there today. This country is not going to fall. It will fall. And the question is when. It's not if. It's when. If we may wake up tomorrow and be gone. They're out there buying their stupid iPads and stupid computers and their stupid phones. And they want $15 an hour for, for, for labor. And they want to go down to go see a big fat giant rat, which is not really a rat. They want to go ride on, on rides that, you know, the lowest bidder gets to, you know, check it out and, and save money and cut all kinds of corners. I wouldn't ride anything like that today. No way. Let destruction come upon him at unawares. Let his net that he has catch his, let no, but try there. Let his net that he has hid catch himself. You know what Jesus did to those Pharisees? He caught them in their own. Well, your disciples are not supposed to be eating and rubbing and uh, you know corn on the Sabbath. Yeah, but don't you, if your sheep fall into a hole, don't you take care of it? What do you say? Don't do your sheep fall into a pit? Don't you? Ah, look at that. Going back to Psalm 35, the pit. You're trying to catch me, so I have to say, listen, what about the sheep in the pit? Don't you go help him on the Sabbath day? Have you not read? Into that very destruction, let him fall. 
that's kind of remarkable that what you plan you will fall many places the Bible says you know if you kill the sword you're going to be killed by the sword precept upon precept eye for an eye two for a two my soul shall be joyful in the Lord it shall rejoice in his salvation I mean people out there who are in the Lord and rejoice over something stupid unworthwhile all my bones shall say Lord who is like unto thee your bones cry out bones is what holds you up which delivereth the poor from him that is too strong for him you're always going to have poor people and just because he's poor he gets advantage taken of and God's against that Americans are going to be charged with, with great charges of destroying the poor and making them poorer so they can have their fat wallet and especially so if you if you do it in the name of healing in the gospel living in your mansions and driving around in your jets well yeah I deserve that deserve a smack in the face the poor and the needy from him that spoil with him yeah, there are people who are poor and they're needy they need help and all they do the rich is spoil they make it worse and I've told Tracy this many times why is it in America I've come to know with this two fakes I have why is it that I can't go to American and get help and get the need that I need for, for healing but if a turtle washes up or a whale washes up they're all out there and give them medical and give them helicopter ride and take care of them why is this country more to save an animal than their own American well, we'll go over to some country where something's happening somewhere we'll bring them way over here to America to take it. wait a minute you got your own Americans that are in trouble and have health needs And God will charge you. President Obama, you realize that there's a health problem in this country, and you will be charged with the fact is that nobody's getting the help that they deserve. And as a leader of this country, you want to play games, you want to shift games, you want to do whatever you want to do, but you're not doing right. I'll give you, if you hear this video, I'll tell you how you solve the health care problem. Are you ready, Mr. President? And the next president we put in office, Lord willing, this is how you solve the problem with the health care in America. Tell the doctor and the dentist this is as much as you can charge. You can charge no more. And then you can get rid of the health care uh, companies that mess around and make decisions at doctors. You can only tell a doctor, say, listen, tell a dentist, $35 for that tooth, and that's all you can charge, nothing more. And you watch how much they'll run like rats because they want to make money for the love of money. And we just saw the poor. And God will charge you with the excesses that you charge for a simple procedure in someone's life. And they didn't count you for what you did with that money. How's that one? And then how much you put into the Lord's plate. <laughs> All right. False witnesses. Now, this is interesting as far as the, Mes the Masonic. Masonic. Wow. Masonetic. Verse, watch this one. You want to see something you didn't see in the Gospels? False witness did rise up. What are you saying? No one called them. They came on their own accord. They laid to my charge, Jesus, things that I knew not. Well, we know Jesus knows everything. 
But when they appeared before the Sanhedrin and they had their little thing there and, G and Jesus said this, well, he didn't say that. He said this. No, he said this. No, he said. And they had a big, and his Bible says they couldn't even agree with each other. They laid charges against Jesus that Jesus said, you know what? I don't even know what you're talking about. How's that one? They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. So Jesus went about healing, taking care of the people, feeding the people. He went about telling the truth of God, and they gave him a cross, and they gave him his beard being pulled. They gave him the cat of nine tails. That's evil. See, we think of evil as, oh, wicked. Oh. You got Hollywood inside you. Knock it out with a two by four. Throw the TV out in the, out in the ocean. Evil is the way you treat somebody. Didn't we just read about the rich man, verse 10? You know how you treat poor people? God says that's evil. <laughs> What they did to Jesus in his final two days, from the garden to Calvary, God said it was evil. How about that? Scripture was scripture. But as for me, Jesus, when they were sick, now this is what Jesus did with good. My clothing was sackcloth. Jesus, well, we're going to see, humbled himself for those that were sick. I humbled my soul with fasting. Jesus fasted for those people that were sick. And for that fast, they cried out, Crucify him! That's evil. You know, when you help someone out and you turn around and stab them in the back, that's evil. And my prayer returned unto my own bosom. We know Jesus prayed. It's recorded. Jesus' prayer went into the heart of him, who he was. Listen, in the heart of Jesus was God. The sinless God prayed for those people around him. Listen, when Jesus wept, John eleven thirty five, 35, those wasn't just cockerdile tears. Those were pure, holy tears as he cried over Jerusalem. And then look what they did to him. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. Jesus treated everybody right. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. Where'd you see that in the Gospels? Where'd you see Jesus in agony over a person that was, that was sick, that was sore? There's a place that says he groaned in the spirit. And then you had the garden where he sweat drops of blood. But in my adversary, they rejoiced. What did they do to him when he was on the cross? And gathered themselves together. Where were they all? Yea, the agents. And that's a lower class of people. Gathered themselves together against me. You mean the poor, the lame, the blind, the sinners of the nation came against Jesus? The very one that he healed? You mean it wasn't just the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the Roman government? And I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. Read what they reviled him while he was on the cross. Read the words of them. With, hypocrit with hypocritical mockers and feasts. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? 
He's on the cross now. Rescue my soul from their destruction. My darling from the lions. You know, that's an interesting reference there. You know, Satan was right there on the cross with him. Satan was all with the people down the thing. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. Hebrews 2.11 I will praise thee among much people. After the finished work of Calvary, great congregation would be us. Those who believe on him with much people. Those who doesn't say all people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him shall not perish. But Jesus said, broad is the way, many that go in, straight is the gate, and few. Let not them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. You know, there are things you're going to do in your life and they're going to be rightfully rejoice over you. That ought not be so, Peter says. Peter says you ought to suffer and suffer one that has done no wrong. Paraphrasing. But if a man, suff if a man suffers for righteousness and doing right and that was holy, happy are you. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. Better watch out for those that wink. For they speak not peace. Well, they may say peace. But they dis devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. We read about devices the other night. They may say one thing, but they're doing something else. Yea, they open their mouths wide against me and say, Aha! Aha! Or I have seen it. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silent, O Lord. Be not far from me. You know, for the last few verses we read, you know, there's a point that God's going to turn his face on Jesus and look away. And Jesus knows it. This thou have seen, O Lord, keep not silent. You know what God's going to do? There was silence in heaven. O Lord, be not far from me. And God turns on him. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment when sin came upon him. Even unto my cause, my God and my Lord, my God, my God. What is his cause that you and I may live? That there may be a way to buy back this wicked thing called mankind? That's the only reason why he done it. Judge me, O Lord, my God, according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. So the Bible says that one day that those that pierce him shall look upon him. Let them not say in their hearts, Oh, so would we have it. You know, they thought they got the victory that afternoon on Calvary. We finally got rid of them. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. He's dead. Won't have to do anything with him no more. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves. I think that's against my, with my Bible, that missing letter. Against me. Look at the last times of Jesus on this planet. They weren't ashamed when he was on that cross. They were shooting dice, whatever, for his clothes, mocking him. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor, that favor my righteous cause. The disciples, were they happy and joyful when Jesus was on the cross? No. Next time you see them, they're up in the upper room hiding. 
Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his service. And you go into the book of Acts now. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness, book of Acts, and thy praise all the day long. Wonderful song. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bears.